Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God's good and he is worthy to be praised. And you made it. It is Friday and you made it. Through another week. Yeah, you made it through another week. And I pray that somehow uh, uh, our time together this week was provide was something that was a blessing to you, providing you with encouragement. And providing you with some some understanding of the power of God operating in your life, and I tell you, we we are we are just amazed at how God is is taking us through all the different weird things that are happening in people's lives. I mean, man, you know, we get reports of all kinds of stuff going on with folks, and just it, it's unbelievable at times that somebody could stoop to such a low thing to come in and as a son and kill your whole family that's just crazy but you know stuff like that's happening but perilous it, times is what he says yeah it's perilous times chaos and uh but through it all of the last days through it all days. yeah Andre crouch wrote a song years ago through it all i've learned to trust trust in jesus and through everything that you go through, remember to pull out the wisdom that's involved. And and rather say, rather you going and saying, well, Lord, why is this happening to me? I don't understand why this is happening to me. Your attitude should be, what is it that I need to be um, receiving? And what is it that I need to get out of this thing that I just went through? What do I need to get out of this thing that I'm going through? And just keep going. I mean, every day is a new day. So wake up. And if it you know, if you didn't do it like you wanted to do previously, then you got a new day. You can start over again. I mean, God doesn't mind that, man. Just start fresh today. You know, you decided, well, I'm not going to complain no more. And you complained all day yesterday. Just a, just a new day today. You can start fresh and just keep working on it. And that's what this is about. You start fresh and you keep working on it. I mean, you know, and, and that's how you 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 do this thing. You will encounter negativity all around you you'll encounter meanness all around you it's just probably about time to just like listen this doesn't surprise me i'm just trusting god that he's going to help me to go through this he's got he's giving me a realignment so i'm not going to get frustrated because i can't have what i want to have when i want to have it i just you know god i'm trusting you and uh, maybe the reason why i don't have it is because you don't want me to go down that path Maybe the reason I don't have it is because maybe it's not time. Yeah, it might not be time. Yet. God's preparing you for the time to get ready for it. So when you do have it, you know what to do with it mm -hmm. and uh, you're equipped. And it doesn't ruin you or mess you up or get your mind in a place where, you know, you might say, well, you know, I'm not bragging and then brag. You know, it, it, God, God knows how to work and prepare us to receive uh, everything that he wants us to have. And so. And the good thing is we don't have to go through things alone. Yeah. You know, you all are, we all are going through things. Bible says that we're going to have tribulation, persecution, trials, tests, all kinds of things. But the good news is we don't have to go through it alone. We can go through it with God. He's with us. Jehovah Shema, the ever present one. Mm -hmm. We have each other. There's a community of believers here, the E church, world changes church i mean people all over the world that you can connect with and get encouragement with every day so mm -hmm. you don't have to feel like you're alone today yeah it's friday and it, it's a it's a time to just really i don't know but one of the first thoughts i had this morning was you know be careful not to get cluttered in your thinking and in your mind be careful not to get cluttered now the question i'm asking you is are you cluttered in your mind uh, when you wake up is there is there kind of a heaviness that's on you because you have so much on your mind you know and i was thinking about that today i'm like look i don't have to be cluttered that's a decision you can make i don't have to carry so much on my mind you know you can just kind of cast those things over on the lord uh so that was the first thing I, that i got this morning the second thing i got this morning was Here's this question I'm asking you. How often do you visit your past? Are, are you finding that you're visiting your past like every day or too much? Now, let me let me give you this. There's nothing you can do about your past. It's done. OK. 
So why are you going to go and visit your past and risk bringing something from your past into your present? Why are you risking going to your past and 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 bringing something that you'd been delivered from back into your present and into your future? You got to speak to yourself and say, get out the past. The Holy Ghost is going to help you, too. He's going to say, why are you visiting your past? We're done with that. I'm trying to get you to this place in your future and you you keep visiting your past some people make a daily check-in and they're in their past some people make a, a a daily visit into their past you got to move on you got to move on your future is going to be greater than your past and all of the regrets and all the things you have in your past in your future, God has just this recompense and this the the beauty of 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 the grace of God in your life. And you still going back, crying over something and it's done. It's over. They gone and it's over. It's gone and it's over. And you, you still keep paying a visit to your past. Stop looking in the rear view mirror. Now, that's a, that's a. That's come up a couple of times just just on this 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 uh, platform. Stop uh, viewing life through your rear view mirror. Stop doing that. And uh, I think as you understand that God is trying to prepare you for your future, God has made provisions for your future. God has done so many amazing things for your future. You really don't have time. If you'll focus on on today and focus on where God's taking you, you know, hey, sorry for what happened in the past. Didn't mean to do it. Didn't know no better. Mm -hmm. uh, don't don't go around wishing I had another chance because you don't. That's done. It's over. That day's bye bye. OK, let's move forward. Let's move forward. You know, Taffy, sometimes people God is instructing them to do things. And they're not doing it because they're considering their past. You know, now, please don't misunderstand me. You take the wisdom out of the stuff that you've gone through. You learn the lesson from what you've gone through, but you don't go and relive it, you know, all in your head. And, you know, and the negative stuff I'm mainly speaking of, uh, you know what I'm saying? Some people just keep going back there and getting depressed from their past. So. Uh, let's just leave that place. Let's not let's not stay in that place. Let's not walk in that place. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I want to get right into something today. Um, you know, when we talk about living this life. It's not living a arrogant life over the scriptures. We know it's not living a boastful life over the miracles that we've seen in our life and all that. I think, you know, when you talk about living um a life for Jesus Christ you got to live that life in cooperation with the love of God okay uh, I, I think the major subject uh in our life should be you know the love of God and us believing the love of God but I think sometimes people have reduced the love of God down to a feeling or just an emotion and it can tap your emotions and it can be a blessing when it gets into your emotions. But I, I think we need to talk about what it is. You know, love, according to the word, is it's it's patient. It's able to put up with suffering. It's, it's able to put up for wrong, with, with wrong for a long time without giving up. Uh, the Bible says love is kind, that that love actively seeks to do good to others in ways both small and great. OK, so we we, we understand that. Love uh, believes the best. Love believes the best. Bears up in under anything. Yeah. But the behavior of love can be described negatively as well as positively. Okay. So if there are certain things love does, according to what we just said, love believes the best. Okay. Then there are certain acts which define it. There are also other things love does not do. And sometimes the best way to get the definition of something is to talk about what it's not. And so Paul uh, begins to talk uh, some things about the love of God. And he says that the love of God is not, watch these three words, it is not boastful, it is not arrogant, 
and it is not rude. Love is not boastful, it is not arrogant, and it is not rude. Now, for most people, you know, we find excuses to be boastful, we find excuses to be arrogant, and we defend ourselves when it comes to being rude. And I guess the first description that you just gave of being boastful, let's talk about that for a moment. Yeah. Is that um, when I think of the word boasting or being boastful, it's almost like another synonym I would think is like bragging. Yeah. Boastful bragging. You know, it's when when you're boastful, it's when you try to enhance your reputation by drawing attention uh, to your exploits or even to your possessions. So, you know, you got to ask yourself what I am saying. Am I trying to enhance my reputation by drawing attention to my exploits or by drawing attention to my possessions? Uh, I'm trying to enhance my reputation by telling you I got this kind of bag or I drive this kind of car or I've done this, 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 this. It's it's all about how you present it. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost as if maybe we're taking the credit for things as opposed to giving the glory to God, giving the glory to God of the possessions, the accolades or the accomplishments yeah. um, on a practical basis. So it's um, a good way to hopefully that helps on a practical level. Yeah. So uh, the thing about uh, boasting it's usually a sign of insecurity. Now, now just think about that. You know, the next time you, you kind of find yourself doing, ask yourself, why am I saying this and doing this? Am I saying it to give glory to God? Uh, or am I saying it because I'm trying to enhance my reputation? Um, and, and, and either case, if you find yourself being boastful and boasting, it's usually a sign of insecurity. So those who brag about how great they are are generally those trying the hardest to convince themselves, <laughs> you know, and, and so the, the issues there, I, I tell you, if you just learn how to listen carefully, people will tell you uh, everything you need to know about them and, and just kind of recognize in these these little areas right here. And so um, the real reason people boast is because they want others to admire them. And that's 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 the bottom line issue right there. There there are other ways that you can do that. And, and really, it's a kind of sad thing uh, because it's saying I, 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 you're not really a bad person. You just you feel insecure. You, 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 you feel like I don't have the tools necessary to get other people to admire me. So this may be the only way that I know of to be able to, you know, get this thing to happen in my life. So that, that's one of the things that love is not. I think too, Taffy, insecurity or inferiority, you got to learn how to be okay with who you are. And when you're okay with, with who you are, you, you don't feel a need to try to enhance your reputation. You're, you're good. You're good. And that peace comes through that personal relationship with God. I don't feel a need to enhance my reputation. Um, so I don't feel a need to boast or uh, any of those things, because I, I'm convinced uh, God, uh, he's really cool to let me know who I am and I accept who I am and and I'm good with that. And and you don't have to compare. The Bible says it's not good to compare because when you compare, you really belittle what God is doing for you and who he's made you. And I keep echoing this thing about stop trying to exchange uh the genuine authentic you for a cheap copy we 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 want you you you'd be surprised how people will just appreciate you and who you have and what you bring to the table and of course you're wired for whatever for whatever god called you to to do so don't think you're weird because you're not like that person uh that person's wired for another purpose and so are you so learn how to appreciate you know, how you how you turned out and the wire that you have to, to, to be used by God. Now, let's look at the second one. Love is not arrogant. Love is not arrogant. Arrogant people, um, the literal translation Paul uses here is it's not puffed up. It's not puffed up uh, with uh, an overinflated 
sense of, of your own importance and value, an overinflated um, sense of your own importance and value. Some people really think they are more than what they are. You know what I'm saying? They're puffed up. They're they're inflated with uh, 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 this overinflated, if, if you will, with a sense of their own importance and and their own value. Dude, I think when we don't get our value from God, and that's one thing that I have learned and remind myself of, and maybe this could help somebody today. We'll try to get our value from other people Mm -hmm. or from what we do and trying to get it maybe for the words that people will say about us. But, you know, God placed his value on us from the foundations of the world. I mean, that's why he sent Jesus so that he could have an opportunity to live on the inside of us and to empower us with his life, his love and his presence. But if we don't see the value of that and we downplay it, then we'll go and try to fill that need by other things. And that's inferiority. When you feel like you're you don't matter when you feel like you are short Mm -hmm. and uh, you're not enough. Significance is a need that we are born with. Mm -hmm. A basic human need. It's a basic human need. It's a basic human need. I want to feel like I matter. I want to feel like I'm significant. And hopefully that was designed to be imparted in you as you grow up so that it doesn't become something you feel like you have to seek when you get grown. Mm -hmm. And inferiority is, is the root of sin, to be honest with you, because what happens, a person who is inferior will try to deal with that by being superior. And it's really a false sense of superiority uh, trying to deal with those feelings of inferiority. So, And we cover up, sorry to cut you off, by being arrogant. Yeah. Yeah, you cover it up by being arrogant. Looking down on people. Yep. Um, what was the adjective you just had? Being puffed up, thinking we're better than people. Um, Feeling a need to promote our own value and, and self-importance. Self-importance. And so when I see an arrogant person, it's not because they're just like a terrible person. This is the person who's like, I, nobody else is making me feel important and nobody else is valuing me. So feel like I need to do it myself. Yeah. You know? And I, I guess it's how you look at it. It's, it's how you look at it. And yeah. I remember when I first became a Christian and got born again. And I remember Dr. Price, Frederick Casey Price talking about the difference between being arrogant and confident. Right. You know, I think there is a difference between the, those two and right. we get it confused, you right. know, knowing who we are, knowing the value that God places on us, mm-hmm. knowing that, um, you know, we're not better than anybody else. We're all equal in Christ. We stand on equal ground. Um, the same privileges and benefits are available to us all. We are confident of the promises that apply, that are in his word, apply to everyone. Yep. And we avail ourselves to it. So I think um, love is really knowing and recognizing that we don't have to be boastful about it. Well, when you're confident, you would have no need to be arrogant. And 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 that that's just so true. It's like I can be confident and not be arrogant. In fact, people who are confident, they don't see any need to try to be arrogant, you know, because they're confident about who they are. They're confident about, um, you know, who God made them. They're they're confident about their identity. And that whole issue of identity is, is you know, it spills over into um, all of these issues we're talking about right now. And so um, arrogant people think they're bigger and more important than any anyone else. Now we know why. Because of that, they try to use other people. They're pushy and, and, and graspy and controlling and bossy. They get where they want to do by climbing over the backs of other people. The arrogant do not have friends. I mean, this is a lonely life. You know what I'm saying? They, they only have rivals or servants, not friends. 
They're arrogant. They're, they're fighting for uh, somebody to recognize their value. They're fighting for, you know, their own importance. So they're climbing over people's backs and they don't view people as friends. They view them as rivals. They view them as servants. An arrogant person evaluates others on the basis of what they can do for him. Okay. And that's a sad thing when you're evaluating people based on what they can do for you. So those who are arrogant never serve others. They only use others to serve them and they make them feel uh, and only use others to, to make them feel important. But, you know, love is not arrogant. It's 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 not that. But you see you see what happens when somebody has gone has suffered the trauma of being devalued so long and you see what happens when nobody has placed in them to that that you're important mm -hmm. that you're valuable um that you matter that you matter you're yeah yeah it's just all these things are important so you, they're not ways. arrogant just because they they just want to be a butt they they're fighting for i mean for the the life of please somebody value me it's almost like nobody recognizes my importance. So I have to announce it myself. You know, you know, I have to tell you that was my idea. <laughs> you know, I need to let y'all know. We won't even let God get the credit. No, I need to let y'all know. Yo, God did something, but it was my idea that God blessed. Because I got to feel like I'm important. I'm, I need somebody to. And, 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 and you are important. Yeah. And that's what you we need to begin matter. to do. We need to affirm to affirm people. That's mm -hmm. that's one of the major deals in 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 the life of men. The lack of affirmation, the lack of affirmation that says you matter. Somebody just said something. It was so funny. They said, yeah, y'all talking about the Pharisees. And then I thought, no, nah, well, today we're talking about Christians. <laughs> we're talking about. Christians who are acting like Pharisees because nobody nobody will tell them that they their value. Uh, see, I, I I don't want I'm not showing you this today so you can have a tool to beat up on people. I'm showing you today so you can have compassion for arrogant people that you you meet. So you can have compassion for people who are boastful that you meet. That you when you see it and you hear it, you go immediately to the base of it and say, Oh wow. They need they need uh, somebody to, to recognize their importance and their value. You know, a lot of times when we get with older people, uh, uh, you know, Taff and I, we, we spend time just lifting them up. Oh, you're so valuable. Oh, you're so important. You remember we went and visited our friend, you know, down the street. And we just we just spent the whole time just lifting him up. You, you, you've done so much for people. Oh, we appreciate you so From a much. Genuine place. Yeah, Not I mean, we were genuine for. Yeah, we weren't. Yeah, we weren't blowing yeah. smoke in his ear, you know. And so maybe that's something that God can lead you to do. Let's look at the third one real quick. We're almost out of time. Um, the third one is love is not rude. It's not rudeness, and this rudeness refers to behavior that is disgraceful or just indecent. You know. Uh, to treat people in an offensive and an insulting manner. Now, this also may derive from how you've been treated, because like I said to you before, people are only mean to you because they're mean to themselves. I mean, how they treat other people is how they treat themselves. And rudeness is one of those things that 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 comes out. It's the way you behave towards those whom you dismiss as unimportant. You're not important to me anyway. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to treat you in a bad way. So when you're rude to someone, you're saying, in effect, you don't matter. And maybe that's what happened to the arrogant guy. Somebody said you don't matter. <laughs> Somebody was rude enough to say, you know, you really don't matter. You're beneath me. You're too insignificant for me to care about the way I treat you. Maybe it was in high school or maybe it was in elementary school. You know. Kids can be kind of um, mean, you know, or rejection. Yeah. You know, maybe it yeah. was in your home and you were never made to feel yeah. that you mattered and that you um, were to be a part or whatever you needed. You yeah. didn't get it. That's a basic human need. 
it's a basic human need. It, it, certain things were designed to come from the parent to the child. And when that thing doesn't come, in some cases, there's the search to try to find it somewhere else. And or if it wasn't effectively communicated, I, I need to try to find it. And, and the person in search of it, they, they really don't know, like, why am I like this? Why am I constantly, you know, rude to people? I guarantee you it's something that happened to you that you just, Lord, show me why, why am I doing this? But yeah. And to ask God to help, help us help mature you. emotionally, which mm -hmm. you've been teaching. If you've not been able to hear these Wednesday night uh, teachings that Creflo has been talking about on emotional maturity, you've been really missing out. And I encourage you to go back because what we're talking about this morning is the same thing. You know, um, we, are rude because we're emotionally immature. We become arrogant. We become boastful. We become pr prideful. Um, we get negative. We don't believe the best. We're critical. We're judgmental. We're impatient. We're frustrated. All these things come when emotionally we're at a place where we're not able to really um, deal with the emotions, you mm -hmm. know, that's a real side. That's a real part of our lives. And when we internalize it and we um, are negative against ourselves, then you know what? That's what's going to come out. And mm -hmm. so we have to pray for ourselves, pray for other people. We have to ask God to help us, to help them and pray for them, you know, because we're all um, in this vessel. We're flawed. We're broken in some areas. We need to be healed. We need to be delivered. And thank God he can, can help us with that. I don't think our lives as Christians should be trying to beat people up when they miss the mark or they're not like we think they should be. I think when we meet people like that, it should, you know, fall upon us to see how we can operate in love and how we can grow from this uh, interaction that we're having with somebody that, uh, that that may be a little difficult to interact with. And I'm learning that you know, almost everything, all of our interactions and everything are provided in our lives so that we can grow in grace and just kind of tap into things that are not comfortable. I think a lot of times that we think that we grow in a comfort zone, but we grow outside of the comfort zone, not within the comfort zone. And, um, you know, anybody that works out and stuff, you have to get to a point where you're exercising outside of the comfort zone in order to get, you know, good benefit from it. You can't stay within the comfort zone. You know, oh, this lifting this weight doesn't hurt, doesn't put any pressure on me. So I'm going to stay there. You're not going to really change. You're going to about stay the same. And so likewise, it is also true emotionally and it's also true spiritually. Uh, don't reject what can happen outside your comfort zone because what happens outside your comfort zone is growth what happens out of your side your comfort zone is maturity what happens outside of your comfort zone is change and that's what people are trying to get but it doesn't happen in the comfort zone we have this misconception that being a christian is always abiding in the comfort zone and if you ever get out of that comfort zone something's wrong that's not true so my, my greatest growth in my Christian life continues to be outside of the comfort zone, whether I'm growing by recognizing I should have and could have done better at handling that or recognizing that I was able to endure and have patience and still walk in love and keep my emotions down. And that's something that I'm constantly working on. My emotions are not going to run or ruin my life. And the way you make sure that doesn't happen is you're constantly growing and maturing in your emotions and emotions are real. Uh, for so long, Christian people wanted to deal with the spiritual side and act like we don't have emotions or to yield or to recognize your emotions was something wrong or unbiblical or not spiritual. I guarantee you one thing, you better learn how to mature in your emotions I don't care how many scriptures, you know, your emotions will take you down if you let them go the wrong way because they'll take you with them. They're strong piece of our life. They are embedded in the soul. 
And we have to condition and train those emotions to line up with the word and the will of God. And sometimes that happens outside of the comfort zone. So, hey, uh, we we uh, declare that you are Psalms 91 equipped. That's right. All and uh, you Psalms 91 equipped all day long. All day long. And uh, the blessings of God are over you. The angels of God watch over you. You're healed. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Nothing's going to come and destroy you today. That's right. And you're going to have an amazing day today because the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. has uh, provided you a new testament and all is well with you, man. That's right. And so you just got to set your mind and keep it set. And after we log off and from one another, you know, you're going to you're going to you're going to go out into life and you're going to be ready for today. That's right. You're going to win. Yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow. OK, today, right now, today. Uh, and everything's going to be ready for you tomorrow. I'll be waiting on you. So let's just do it step by step, day by day. And all is well for today. Amen. Take a deep breath and just release it right now. All is well. We love you so much. Look forward to seeing you on this Sunday. Have an amazing Friday and an amazing weekend. God bless you. Uh, New York, we're coming there April the 28th. That's next Friday, right? Next Friday. Next Friday. This time next Friday, we will doing we will be doing the Psalms 91 Confessions in New York City. Man, that's 10 o'clock and we'll have yeah. a session at nighttime that won't be streamed. It'll be at nighttime at seven in New York. So we're going to be in New York traffic all day on next Friday. So that's going to be, there. yeah, that's going to be a, a magnificent, wonderful blessing. And then we're coming to Miami, Florida, May the 19th. So those of you in the surrounding areas, or you just want to come down to Miami to get a little sun, we'll mm. be having our, 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 our change day there, May the 19th morning and night sessions. And then we'll, we'll close up our tour for this year. Uh, at Charlotte, in Charlotte, North Carolina, on June the 9th, June the 9th. And then the big meeting, the homecoming, the family meeting. Yeah, baby, July 13th through the 15th. I'm telling y'all right now, register now. Don't get mad at me if you come to the World Dome and you think, well, they got enough seats in there. I'm telling you, people are registering from all over the world. I saw some of my friends and family from Uganda. They are already ready got this stuff ready to go. I'm telling you, let's get this thing. It's going to be, we got, we got, uh, what, Ty Tribbett coming, William Mur Murphy coming. We got great speakers. Music, you got a special preaching. women session yes. with uh, you and, and Mimi. Yes. Uh, Y'all going to be, oh my God, I got a special men's session. Mm -hmm. We got uh, the Grace Institute for all ministers and leaders. Dude, we got team meetings all planned out. They got all kinds of stuff going on. It is going to be amazing. It's homecoming. It's time to come home, y'all. Ain't nobody mad at nobody. It's time to come home, y'all. So get them tickets. Let's do what you got to do. Register today, 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 right now. And we are going to have an awesome. It's going to be a party, man. It's going to be a celebration from the time you come on campus. The time you leave, man, it's going to be celebratory. And we are just excited about Grace Life, the homecoming, July the 13th through the 15th. Now, listen to me. If you hadn't registered, do it now. Now, 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 now. Do it now, 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 now. Sound like that commercial. Now, 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 now. Probably wrong word, but anyway. Anyway, we love you guys. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's get it going. And uh, we'll see you this Sunday from the pulpit. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day today.